together through the stormy weather. Stronger together, we can make it better. Stronger together, we can make it better. Stronger together through the stormy weather. Stronger together. Well, Hotel family, Hotel peace and blessings. I greet you in the name of God and the ancestors and whose footsteps I most humbly walk in front of Ed and Mojo from tonight, some Mojo Communications. I am here to do a PIF, conference, PIF conversations with a phenomenal sister. I had the honor to meet um, through a sister, May Dwell, another phenomenal sister. And she's a screenwriter. She does a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. And you know what I do. As a Pan-Africanist, I am going to look for my people who are doing positive things. I want to bring them together so we could build together. I truly believe that we, we have everything we need. God has already given it to us. So I have her on. Her name is Sister Diane Rhodes. We're going to talk to her about her class. We're going to talk about who she is. Why is she here on Piff Conversations today, Brother Omoja? Because I love it. We're going to be doing some work with her sister. I love the conversations I have with her. So let's welcome her to the, to the show. Well, Hotep, Hotep, Sister Rhodes, how you doing? I am doing very well, my brother. How are you? I am fantastic. I am fantastic. Thank Good you for your that. time. Thank you for Thank your you. time. Yeah, you know what? Um, the sister made well introduce us and I asked her for a drop for Kadaga, the series I'm shooting in Africa. And she asked you to do it. And you did it. <laughs> hey, you know, si no, Sister Rose, this is something we have to remember. I tell people all the time. When we do stuff, we never know what God's going to set us up for. Because you could have said, no, the sister made well. And I never would have met you. I never right. would have been doing this. But Absolutely. you said yes, but it didn't hurt yeah. you just to do a drop for me. Because you did the drop for me, now we're talking. Here we are about to go and do more business together. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm very happy that I did it. I'm grateful to Sister Madewell and to you for what you're doing. You're, you, you're making phenomenal strides in the industry. And I see your vision. I support you. I support all my brothers and sisters in the movement. And it is indeed a movement. You yeah. know, uh, I was as I was sharing with you earlier, um, my home base is Atlanta, Georgia, and it is the new renaissance. Uh, for Black people, you know, there are a cadre of filmmakers, producers, writers, actors, actresses, you name it. We're down here and we're cohesive. We're working together. And it is, it's a beautiful vibe. It really is. She's trying to get me to move to Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> uh, well, Sister Rose, one thing you don't know about me, my older brother okay. and, his, and his wife live in, in Atlanta, outside of Atlanta, Georgia. She's a... Uh, Do they? Uh, yeah, his wife's a, a doctor. She's a chiropractor. So she, they're based right there outside of Atlanta. Yep. So Wonderful. I, I, so I have family in the, in the neighborhood already. Yeah, just know <laughs> that anybody who's entertaining the thought of moving to Atlanta, Atlanta's great. Wonderful weather, wonderful food, wonderful people, but there's no water. That's the only thing. <laughs> no water. <laughs> no, I, I have a friend, a very good friend of mine. She's a designer. She, um... She just moved from the Browns to Atlanta, Georgia. She's out in Atlanta right now. She bought a house down there because her company moved her down there. And so she's in Atlanta right now. So she's a, she's a, it's just, she's a designer. That's what she does on the side, but she works with uh, one of the big banking companies. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. wonderful. So let's talk about you. So, you know, I always like, mostly when I speak to women of color, um, I do truly believe there's a lot of young girls out there, young girls, girls of color who, um, who are looking to do what you do, but don't know how to get it started. So what got you started into wanting to be a screenwriter? Where did you start? Well, that's a good question. Um, I started with watching movies. I love movies. I love good movies, thrillers. I'm a, I'm a big thriller fan. And um, I love well-told stories. I also love biographies. I love hearing about how other people triumph through life, how other people go through their struggles and come out of it. You know, it just lets me identify the common thread that we all share in humanity. You know, we're all just uh, works in progress for trying to figure it out, you know, and some people figure it out a little faster than others. Some people go through a little more hardship than others. But at the end of the day, like the good book says, there's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we all go through trials and tribulations and the ability to be able to watch a film and see somebody triumph over adversity is a powerful platform. Yeah. And so I want to be a part of that platform. Mm -hmm. And my specific task is to write. I love to write. She loves to write. So, you know what? So where, what, what was your education like to, you like writing, but what, what education did you get to be a writer and then to be a screenwriter? 
But that's right. three different things right there. Absolutely. Well, in in class, I I excelled in English and reading and writing. Those were my strong suits. And I've always liked to communicate via writing. I was writing plays in fourth grade and it wow. eventually evolved into me producing off Broadway. And um, what I liked is, again, being able to tell a story and be able to shift the way someone thinks, because that's a powerful capability to have, you know. Um, I'm, I'm famous for my cocktail parties. And so uh, when I have people over, I love to get them to interact and mingle and conversate with one another. Because in a good conversation, you can uh, learn different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way with writing. You know, when you write, you can create these characters and have them interact and share points of view. Uh, that may not necessarily be your own, but someone else may have. And hmm. so once you put that on the screen, now the viewer, who is you and I, gets to see that. And when we see that, when you see somebody's perspective on the big screen, it helps you to see something in a different way. Mm -hmm. Case in point, um, there's a show here in the States called uh, Pose. And um, it was a very powerful platform for me because it helped me to see uh, the point of view from someone's, someone's lifestyle choice and what they had to deal with because they chose that lifestyle, mm -hmm. uh, because they felt like they were innately born a different way than most of society. And um, it, was, it was very powerful for me because it made me realize at the end of the day, when you peel away all the layers to who we are as human beings, at the core of us, of each of us, is the very innate feeling that we just want to be loved for who we are. Mm, I like that. So you're, you're talking about a, a writer could shift, adjust the, the paradigm somewhere you're looking at things because with mm -hmm. the power of the word, power of normal, the words, you're able to give people a different perspective or a new perspective on something they probably knew about or something they didn't know about. So now you are actually enhancing someone's skill set. Absolutely. Someone yeah. Absolutely. Wow. And that's powerful. Yeah. You know, that's very powerful. And it's something I do not take lightly. Um, I know that you know, our words are powerful. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes the things we don't say are equally as powerful. Yeah. So there's a, there's a flip side to that coin that too. too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm listening to you and you're in Atlanta, Georgia. And the one person that just jumps into my head as I'm listening to you talking about the power of words is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. Um, we think about him. I mean, we lost him April 4th, 1968. And his words are still with us because they were so powerful and, they, and they, they, they shift the paradigm on Absolutely. how people looked at us as people of color and how we and how we looked at each other, period. Exactly. And so, yeah, so you talk about being a writer, he was an awesome orator, but he had to put those words on paper first. Mm -hmm. And so, right. yeah, so, so, so he was a great writer too, to <laughs> say that. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. I mean, when you think about the grand scheme of life, and who we, how, who we are and how we fit into this, this uh, thread. We are the only creatures on this planet that, are, that can articulate through verbiage, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and that's powerful. that's powerful. You know, I don't have to part my lips to communicate with you. I can write it down, mm. you know? And yes. you can interpret my words as you read them. That's yes. powerful. That's that's, and powerful. we're the only yeah. animals on the planet that can do that. Yes, that, wow. Oh. Now you said it, yeah, we said, yeah, because <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know I, 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 okay, I'm laughing and I'm thinking as you said that because as you know, my wife's family, you know, we have a, a, a care center for animals. So mm -hmm. we have like right now we have about 17 um, dogs and cats on property. Mm -hmm. And so, and so I always tell the owners when they drop the animals out, I have to, you know, very quickly learn to speak to your, your animal in a way that they understand me. Stand it right, uh -huh. and so my it's not only verbiage, but my body language, the way the way I move my hands and stuff like that. So I have to learn very quickly, to, so that way we have some type of formal um, cohesiveness here, because all all I could have there's got to be a connection. <laughs> so yeah, as you said, as a human being, I have to stop. Like, what kind of 
body language, what kind of words, what kind of, what am I using to communicate with each individual animal so they understand what I want them to do? Right. And, and, and that's, I love doing that because all the dogs are different when they come in here. Some of them, you know, I have to really be more, more forceful than with others and so forth and so on. Because right now, as I'm talking to you, there's one under my desk. And yeah, he's <laughs> under my desk right now because when he's at home, that's where he likes to stay. So okay. when he comes here, he comes into the office, he goes under my desk and he's underneath there right now. If I get up and walk away from my desk, he follows me wherever I go. And that's what he, <laughs> that's does, that's what, that's what he does at home. So it's just like, so as you're talking about, so as a screenwriter, you know, you write stories so people could interpret a certain, um, you put words together so people could understand a certain storyline, right? Yes. Am I saying that correctly? So it, yes. It, yeah. So let's to empathize and identify with characters. Yeah. So Hmm, that's, you got me, girl, you got me thinking, Sister Rose, you got me thinking. <laughs> because no, I, when you think about it, you know, there are times when you click on the screen and you just want to be entertained. You don't really want to think. And yeah. that's called mindless entertainment. Yeah, and yeah. Flavor, flavor Flav was good for that. He gave us <laughs> mindless entertainment, you know. <laughs> I'm almost afraid to say that I've watched that one. Guilty of watching mindless entertainment, you know, Real Housewives franchise. Uh -huh. Stuff that's just totally nonsensical sometimes, you know. Yeah. Uh, and there are other times when you don't laugh at me. Don't don't judge me. No, no, no. I'm, so, so, and I'm not. La you know, what I'm laughing. I'm laughing so hard because my wife and I will sit down at nighttime and we'll say, "Okay, we just want to watch something funny. We don't right. want nothing. We don't. We don't want nothing heavy right now. We want right. something funny. Yeah. We want something yeah. silly. We want something silly. So I'm laughing at you because my wife and I go through this conversation every night when we watch. Really? If we watch, if we watch television, like. What do we want to watch? You know, what do we want to watch? Like one of the um, shows that's on television right now um, that we love, I love the writing. Whoever wrote it, wrote it from um, our perspective, of people of color. And that's the, the Bel Air, Fresh Prince Bel Air. The oh, Bel -Air. that's one of my favorites. Isn't that oh wonderful? God. We sit there. It's we such watch a good it, show. And, <laughs> and, and the writing is awesome. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. I mean, I, I, I said, I don't know who the writers are, but man, they should get an wow. Emmy or something because they yes. have put together a show Absolutely. that shows us. It shows yes. us. It's like, and you know what? It's also character development okay. at its finest. Yeah. It really is, it is because, because they totally shifted oh. the paradigm of the oh. character. Well, they tell you first, it tell you it's not a comedy, it's a drama. And then, mm -hmm. I mean, what they did with Uncle Phil, what they did with, oh, Jeffrey. We love Jeffrey because Jeffrey in the old one was just Jeffrey. But this is Jeffrey. I have a thing for Jeffrey. Oh, <laughs> you, oh, you and my wife have a thing for Jeffrey because she'd be like, where's Jeffrey? Jeffrey? Where's Jeffrey? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the, the actor who plays that role, I mean, he does a great job. Or his, oh, his facial I hope expressions. To meet him one day. His facial expressions and the way he delivers. Oh stuff. yes, he's got he, quiet power, and that is quiet, so sexy. So, yeah, yeah. And, and, and so, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm like, sorry. Is this a prime time show? I'm so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> no, but you know what? The thing is, the reason we love that show so much, it shows us. It's not someone else writing about us. It's us writing about us. Whoever yes. the writers are, they have. If they're not people Excellent. of color, if they're not people of color, they have studied us very well to write a very good show. The, you know, yeah. the, the, the writers' room on that show is A plus plus because it's just watching what they did and how it's they off to them. them. Yeah. So, <laughs> so and that's and that's a screenwriter. That's why you know as you know as a writer. So right. That's, that's that's why I have you on here to talk about yeah. that. What do yeah. people? Now you have a you you have um, several levels of classes that you do online and in person. So yes. What who needs to take your class? Just put it like that. I'm trying to find the right words. Who needs to take your class? My class is geared toward the person who is creative, but not quite sure how to formulate or format that their ideas. So it's geared toward the beginning uh, a script writer. That's why it's called Screenwriters for Beginners. And the reason I focus more on that, although I do teach advanced classes, is because there are some fundamental basics that once you learn them early in your writing career, you can run with it. Mm -hmm. um, the, the outline mm -hmm. is essential to any uh, script because it helps you formulate your ideas, you know, block them one, two, three, this happens first, second, and third. It helps you sequence your events um, and it helps you understand the timeline for how uh, uh, events should happen 
to the, uh, to the characters involved in the story. So I would not ever approach a script without first developing my outline. Also, I focus on character mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned uh, mm -hmm. about the Bel Air series, one of the things that's so essential uh, about the series is that the characters are very intriguing. You know, mm -hmm. their dark sides, their light sides, their misunderstood yeah. sides Started. to the characters. They're, yes. they're, they did a very good job of layering the characters. Yes. Um, and that's, that's who we are as human beings. You know, none of us is one thing. We are yeah. layers of multiple situations yeah. and experiences in life. Yeah. And so character development is also emphasized in my class because you want mm. <clears throat> to have exciting characters. You want people to tune into your show and look mm -hmm. forward to seeing these mm -hmm. characters. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, also, there's so many wonderful uh, software programs that people can use now uh, to become good screenwriters that do a lot of the work for you. Um, and they are affordable and some of them are a little uh, more expensive, but there's something for everybody's budget. So it's not beyond your grasp. And that's a wonderful thing. So even if you are new to uh, screenwriting, you don't have to appear so because the formatting software makes you look professional. Oh, wow. I like, and so I, like I focus on that a lot. Oh, oh, that's, I, thank you for saying that, you know, because, <clears throat> you know, as, as, you, um, as you were talking, I'm thinking, you, you talk about the layers of the characters of Bel Air and stuff like that. And I know we're talking about them because I love the show so much. There was there was an episode my wife and I was sitting there watching. There was all these. There were so many layers they were pulling out. And I said at the very end of this uh, that that episode, I said to my wife, I said, "What did you not see in that episode?" She said, "What?" She said, I said "Jeffrey was not in this episode at all." Mm -hmm. And she said, and she was like, "Oh my goodness! I was so into the other characters and all this stuff. I forgot about Jeffrey." And that episode. <laughs> I said, and that, I said, I said, to, I said that was some great writing because they had so many layers they were pulling off on the other characters, mm -hmm. but you mm -hmm. didn't realize that Jeffrey was not in that episode at all. They never mentioned him in the episode or anything, but we did not miss him. There was so much. The writing was so well put together that they were they were un, they were peeling away layers of mm -hmm. the other characters. And, and that, that sixty minutes or fifty nine minutes went by so quick. It was like wow. And I was like really cool. That's yeah. good writing. That's yeah. good writing. And that's, that's what I try to get people on track to do, um, you know, to create a project that entices the reader to want to read more, to want to go further, you know, and to give the entire storyline uh, substance. You know, sometimes writers tend to be really potent in the beginning of their project and then it kind of veers off. And, you know, that's the importance of having and using beat sheets uh, to make sure the tempo of your story um, remains the same or, you know, not doesn't deviate too far off. So all, all of those little techniques and more I teach in my screenwriting class. Um, and, I, and I love, you know, uh, creating new screenwriters because it's an exciting process to know mm. that your words will one day come to life on the big screen or small screen. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think that's, you know, thank you for saying that, Sister Rose. I think that's very important that we as a people understand that because one of my pet peeves is when I hear people say, oh, they don't, this, they don't have nothing on TV for me. Or they have nothing on TV. Well, the thing is, the TV, what's on television is someone's idea that they brought to life. We need to work from our from our perspective in our community to tell our story from our perspective. When someone else is telling our story, if they haven't studied us or been with us, that story will never ever be right. uh, to our liking. Because you know, be, being from the Caribbean, if I see someone doing something, uh, this is Caribbean. Even like one one of the things that I, I always laugh about my 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 family from Jamaica extended family mm -hmm. from Jamaica. They would listen to someone doing a Jamaican accent on television and say, that's not real Jamaican accent. And I crack up because for the, for the untrained air, it sounds yes. Jamaican. But for the right. Jamaicans, the Jamaicans, and it's yes. like, they know, they could say, oh, that's an insult. Some, it's an insult. <laughs> oh, that's not a Kingstonian accent. Oh, this is not from right. Clara Dunn. They could say, oh, this person, yes. because they know. So mm -hmm. if we want our story told correctly with respect, yes. We need to go into these, understand the writer. I always tell people mm -hmm. this, and some people don't agree with me, but when you stop and think about it, the writer is the most important person in the industry because the writer sets the tone to the 
actors you get because if you talk to Denzel Washington's people, the first thing they're going to do is say, send me a script. Send me a right. script. Everybody's going to say, Absolutely. send me a script. So right. if you don't have a, a good writer, a good script, a writer who could write a good script, you're not going to get who you want. So for, right. so for me, I always tell people the writer is the most powerful person in the film, in the, in the industry, period, because music is someone has to write the music. Someone mm -hmm. has to, it's so writing is a, is a very, it's the most, most powerful vocation you could think about because it's a process of communications. And if you can't communicate, you can't get your, your, your thoughts to, to, the, to the person you're trying to talk to. But from a humble standpoint, I will also say that the marriage of a good writer with a good actor and a phenomenal director, it's a, yeah. it's a powerful marriage. Oh, well, <laughs> We, okay. <laughs> we, we, we see that when it comes to the Oscars, the Grammys. Oh, yes. Yeah, we see, yeah, we see that. Because, That's what um, we strive for, well, all those elements together. <laughs> come together. Because, but, you know, yeah, because mm -hmm. the, the, if the director looks at the script and says, this script doesn't make sense, or the, if, the, if the actor says, this, this is silly, you want me to do right. that? Because they're reading right. something. So the writer has to be on point because the writer is like the, writer is like the, the flower in the cake. With no flower, you've got no cake. Yeah, right. so, absolutely. So, so that's how important the writer is in bringing everybody together, so everyone is happy about what they're seeing, what they're absolutely. doing. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, so I think mm -hmm. you know what your your um your job as a screenwriter teacher <laughs> is to make sure we have phenomenal screenwriters. <laughs> that's my job in life. <laughs> no, no, no pressure. That's no my pressure. job in life. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. But it's something I do. I love to do. I love to share my my passion for writing and creating characters and, um, you know, to be able to to be a part of the, the 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 seed planting process where I plant the seed in someone. And then, you know, this wonderful writer emerges as they blossom in their craft. That's an honor to me. You know, I, I recently had a class and one of the students, you know, couldn't stop thanking me because I helped him to open up and pull out what was already there inside of him. He just couldn't get it out, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I had to thank God for that gift because I understand that frustration when you know you are meant to do something so much greater than what you're actually doing, but you just can't get to it. You can't get it out. And you just need somebody to help you pull it out. Well, that's what I do. That's what I love to do. No, that's, that's, that's that's great. No, congratulations. I, I really appreciate what you do because, you know, I um, the project we're doing right now in Uganda, like you know, uh, brother Paul will send me the script, and my and my wife and I will go over the script, and we'll make some you know, adjustments and changes to it because, you know, it's always good to have someone read your stuff after you write it because they they'll see it from a different perspective, and so <laughs> it, it's, it's so as you're talking, I'm I'm thinking about the process. The process right. of getting a great script is several people coming together, a writer putting down, you know, a screenwriter. Because, you know, if you don't have that process in place, you want to get yourself done, but you're not going to, not going to look too good. <laughs> it's not going right. to. So, 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 so let's talk about your classes. Okay. So I know, the, the, and for those who know me, you know, I sent information a lot. So I, I sent her last flyer out family, knowing the dates was gone has passed away, but I just want you to know she existed. That's why I send the fly out. So, so some people say, oh, this is already expired. This already went by. Yes, I, yeah. I'm going to give you new dates, so the she's 18th going... and 19th of this month, actually. Yes. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be sending the fly out. I'm going to be posting it on my social media. So um, Good. especially, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach, I want to say this for the parents. Uh -huh. um, because you know, as a little boy, my mom put a camera in my hand and look where I am today. Okay. Right. Um, wow. And so as parents, we, 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 we have the duty to guide our children. So you have some, some parents or aunties, uncles, you know, extended family. You have some young ones in your, in your household or in your family outline that mm -hmm. love to write. They love writing. They'll sit there and they just like writing, writing. They write some stuff. So you say silliness, but it's them developing that skill at a very young age. So yes. you might have some teenagers who like to write, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you have some teenager or preteen in your um, household or in your family outline who likes to write, they might need to take her class because they might want to write a story, but just uh, missing a couple of pieces to how to outline it. So let me ask you, Sister Rose, what ages do you work? What's the earliest ages? Do you have an age limit that you work with? I don't have an age limit. Mm -hmm. um, 
I would just say that I would assume that one would be able to grasp the concepts that I offer by age 16, 16, I would say, Um, you know, but there, there may be an anomaly out there. I don't know. (laughs) I would be happy to come across that person. Or, or maybe one day you need to do a screenwriter's class for for teenagers or preteens. That too. Hey. (laughs) that too. Hey, I was a teenager when I was writing, you know, so it, it so, can happen. So I, I'm going to post, I'm going to post the, um, I'm going to post the, the flyer when you give it to me, but let's give the information right now. And I'll also put it on the bottom of the screen. So how can people contact you for your, how can people contact you? Okay. So the easiest way to get to me is to go to the dream empire website, which is uh, www.dream empirefilms.com and then you'll see uh the tabs that says dream empire academy you will click on that and then you'll see all the classes that we offer of which my screenwriting class is listed among them okay so family um she just gave you her information i'm going to put it in the bottom of the screen and when we edit this um, interview um please reach out to her um it might not Thanks. okay I say this all the time, my wife and uh, we say this all the time. What we do here is give our global community information. The information might not be for you, but it's for you to pass to someone else that needs it. Mm-hmm. In the spirit of Ujima, collective work and responsibility, let's collectively work together, understand our responsibility to make our global community better. And so if this is not for you, just take it and pass it on to somebody else, please, because we need to tell our story from our perspective, but let's make sure we tell the story with class, grace, and integrity. And that's what she's helping us do. And I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy to have her, Ma'am Sister Maidwell. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for um, putting her in my life. You know, because I didn't know her. And she did. <laughs> thank you, Lisa Maidwell. <laughs> And we're gonna be doing more out. With, yeah, we're gonna be doing more Sister Rose uh, because what she does is very important to the, the film business. You know, it's the backbone of the film business. And so um, I don't know where this is gonna lead us, but I know God always has a plan that I don't see, but I just follow. And so, Sister Rose, thank you so much for your time and, and explaining what basic good screenwriting is about, and, and, and opening yourself up to my global community. So please, family, <laughs> um, check her out. Uh, what what is yeah? You have your website. Do you have a, a Facebook page? A I do have a Facebook page. Yes, it's just Diana Rhodes. Um, let me see. I have a short haircut. You probably wouldn't recognize me because I my hair is a little long, but I have it up in a bun now. But on the Facebook page, um, it's a short haircut. And um, yeah, just go to Diana Rhodes, and you should be able to find me. Yeah. Um, and on my Facebook page, my banner says. Uh, we all have a story. What's yours? Mm. You know, because mm. that's that's my motto in life. We all have one. What's yeah. yours? And maybe we can learn from one another. And I'm yeah. so glad you spoke to Black excellence because that's what I really agree about. Uh, we need to promote that more. You know, let's yeah. be excellent toward one another and for one another. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, you know hopefully, you know, I don't know what God has in store for me and uh, when PIF is going to be in person again. But mm-hmm. when we, when we, if we, if and when we go back to in person, I definitely would like you to come on board, um, go get the funding to get you into the Caribbean to do a, a in person um, screenwriting because that's very important. That's very important. Um, so we need to. I mean, we have some good <laughs> writers. Uh, you know, we have some great writers in the Caribbean. But as you know, being a good writer, writing good books doesn't make you a good screenwriter. So right. you know, the, the has process, to translate. Yes, it has, absolutely. Yeah, so, so it's not, it's not, it's not putting anyone down. But you know. I'm, I'm very good in electronics. I was an aerospace electronics, but you know, there's certain things in electronics I don't touch because it's outside of my realm. But I'm, I'm same thing. You could be a great writer. You write great books. That doesn't mean you're a great screenwriter. So to take a class that helps you transition or see the connectivity between writing and screenwriting is very important. So thank you, Absolutely. Sister Rose, for being for being that person building that bridge. Absolutely, and I look forward to my new students. I know they're coming. So yeah. come on. <laughs> okay. Well, do you have a limit of class of people in the class? How many? How many? What's your limit for students in the class? I don't have a limit as of yet, but I like to give everybody, uh, you know, a certain amount of attention. So comfortably, I try to have at least ten to fifteen students in a class. Mm-hmm. I would say ten to twelve. Let's do ten to twelve. A dozen students, because when you have too many, then you can't give everybody the attention that they need. So yeah, um, I try to cap it at uh, at least a dozen. 
to comfortably navigate uh, should anybody have questions, because I do give homework lessons also, and I do like to give everybody a platform to speak. So, yeah, um, so, just so come got, on, sign up. So let me ask you a couple of questions before we go. Your class is on the 18th and the 19th. That's a Monday and a Tuesday. So it's a two-day class? Two-day class from seven to nine, two hours uh, each session. Uh, the sessions are uh, $100 for two, um, and that's not bad. It's not bad that's, at all. It's not bad. Yeah. That's <laughs> you know, and you get a lot for your money. And at the end of the day, what you will be able to do is say, I successfully know how to write a spec script. Mm -hmm. And um, that's important because that at least will get your foot in the door, you know, mm -hmm. and the more you do, the better you'll get. And um, that's what it's about. Just helping you yeah. to get to that next level. Well, Sister Rose, I have to say your price is what I'll say is a blue light special. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that, you know, I've been told, oh, you need to charge 500. Like, no, that's not going to work. Not in this yeah. economy. Not yeah. now. Uh, and, and also, it's also, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to, are you trying to empower the community? Because you know, you could get, you could get 500 people to give you a hundred dollars or one person to give you $500. What, how, how, how depends on how you look at it, you know, because you know, 500 people will tell at least 250 other people about you. One person will, how many people is one person going to tell about you? So, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. So I, I, I go to, I do the same thing myself with my company. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I want to see us make it and we're not going to make it if we're, you know, looking at the wrong thing. And sometimes it's not about the money, but it's about the substance of what you're offering, yeah. you know, because the money will come. I love yeah. what I do. So it, yeah. it's going to come. Yeah. I, tell to, I, 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 just, I just told my wife that I said, you know, I'm so busy working the animals. I don't focus on the money. I focus on the quality of, of what I do with the animal because I know if I give great quality work to the people, the money will come. Yeah, the money will yeah. come. So yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. But we do yeah. need the money. But you know, it depends on your mindset. Yeah, definitely. But Sister Rose, thank you so much for your time. We had a great thank conversation. Thank you, my brother. On, <laughs> on, on camera, off camera, we had a great conversation. Absolutely, so please, absolutely. Please, let's keep in touch. Let's see how, what. Let's see what we can do together because um, I, I know I, I know we need to do some stuff together. What I'm not sure, but I know we need to do some stuff together. Oh, it's gonna be big. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> okay. Oh, you, you okay? You claim it. My wife's okay. You claiming that? Okay, I get. It's I gonna it. be big. I, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Well, family, well, thank you thank, for having me. Thank you, and family. This is what we do uh, another Piff conversation with another phenomenal sister, a sister of color, you know. But I love what I do. I love, I thank God for this opportunity to talk to my people globally and empower ourselves. So please be careful out there. We want to talk to you, not about you. And we'll talk to you in the next um, Piff con con conversations. Thank you, Sister Rhodes. Take care, everyone. Okay. Bye. Okay, bye. Thank you. Through the stormy weather. Stronger together through the stormy weather. Stronger together we can make it better. Over, over, let's take the world over. Over, let's take the world over. Over, with love. Na, 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 na. Over, over, let's take the world over. Over, take the world over. Out of control. Don't know your end from beginning. You're losing touch with your soul. When you find yourself in a sticky situation, just pray. Breathe, meditate. Focus on your day. You see me? I believe in my people. The power of my people. People, yeah. You see, we. We can move mountains, we part the oceans and see If you just believe We can take the world over